I asked my friend Arison Carvalho to send me a few of his photos so I could work with them and capture one. He was kind enough to send me a few of his images for this video. If you haven't seen Alison's work yet, please, please go right now to his Instagram and take a look. He's really, really amazing. His work is fantastic. It's been featured on many magazines and galleries around the globe. He's just a wonderful, wonderful photographer. This is the picture that we're going to work today and it's a, it's a great photo. It's a bit moody, very dark, and we are going to try to keep that vibe. The first thing I'm going to do is fix the white balance. So I'm going to pick the white balance color picker and I'm going to choose something in this image that I think should be neutral. I'm pretty sure this is a neutral, this is kind of a gray background, so I'm going to click on it and see what happens. Sure enough, the, the white balance is completely fixed. With the white balance fixed, what I'm going to do next is just adjust the exposure a little bit. This is perfect exposure, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull it back just a tiny bit. Just because this is a somber picture, it will make good use of less exposure. Uh, I'm gonna pull back the contrast as well, just a tiny bit. The brightness, same thing. And the saturation, I'll leave it alone for now because there aren't many colors on this picture to, to begin with. We have the red very accentuated here on this uh, wires and that's about it. I'm going to increase the clarity just a little bit and this will make the texture of the, of the paint and the skin and the, and the hands and the, the, the texture of the, the entire picture is going to pop a little bit more. I'm going to just increase the structure as well, just a tiny bit. Now for the levels, I'm going to work on separate channels just so I can add or remove color values from each channel as I see fit. Uh, in this case, I would like to add a little bit of blue to the shadows. So I'm going to go to the blue channel and I'm going to push this handle here to the right side and what it does is it adds blue to the background or to the, the not the background but to the, the shadow to the darker areas uh, I don't want too much I just I want just a tiny bit so I'm gonna gonna go with three I'm gonna remove some red from it so to remove it I'm gonna get the I'm gonna use the lower handle here and I'm gonna push it to the right so it's more bluish and instead of being purple now let me add a little bit of yellow to the highlights I'm gonna go back to the blue channel here inside of levels and I'm gonna push to the left the top handle the top right handle just so it it removes blue from the highlights and we're left with the yellow that we want just a tiny bit I haven't touched on on the green channel yet and so let's let's try just to move the midtones a little bit and see what happens so if I go to the left I'm adding greens to the midtones if I go to the right I'm removing greens to, to the midtones which is what I want I want to remove a little bit of green so I have more of this red in the face just a little bit. I'm gonna move to the curve and using the Luma curve I'm gonna push the very center of the the line of the curve up a little bit just a little bit just to illuminate the whole thing and I'm gonna bring this section this section here down a little bit and maybe here I just put it up a little bit as well just to illuminate a little bit more the brighter areas the reason I'm using the Luma curve instead of the RGB is because the Luma doesn't touch the color so I don't I don't gain any saturation or any any changes to the colors that I have so this is a really good way of working with the picture uh, without messing up your colors 
let's go down to the vignetting and I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add a little bit of vignette here just to bring focus to her face that's good enough let's move to the color uh, tab although I do have uh, the blue that I want here I can remove some of the saturation of this blue but only of the blue so the red will pop even more so to do that I'm gonna go to the color editor and I'm gonna get the color picker and I'm gonna just click anywhere here in the blue area and just drag it down and by dragging it down it removes the saturation so if I drag all the way down it, it's just gray again I don't want that I just want a little bit less saturation this is already looking really good but let's not stop here let's do something else I can tell that her eyes let me zoom here the white part of her eyes are a little bit too yellow so let's get the color picker here just do a quick click and hold and then drag down just a little bit and it's already such a big difference this is perfect let's color grade this photo I'll start with the shadow and I'll push once again to the blue areas because that's my that's my game from the from the beginning right so just a little bit this is adding a little bit more of blue there and I can now change how this color affects the darker area so it could affect with a little bit more luminosity like if I go all the way up this is what happens or less so I could actually remove the entire background or make it completely dark just by pushing this down but let's leave it in a comfortable area I still want to see the, the background this is good now for the midtones I'm gonna I'm gonna try something different ideally I would be going for the yellow again but let's just play a little bit with this let's try something in a different area like like maybe getting closer to the blues as well it, it just breaks that that saturation a little bit so yeah I'm actually I'm, I am going to add a little bit of blue to the midtones which is not what I would have done normally but I like it yeah this looks good I'm not gonna touch on the highlights there, there are no highlights in this uh, picture that I would like to change the last thing I want to do is to bring her eyes a little bit more and for that I'm gonna use a layer first let's zoom in her eyes again and I'm gonna create a field adjustment layer and I'm gonna call it eyes I'm gonna go back to exposure and I'm gonna push the exposure a little bit up. I'm not paying attention to the rest of the picture just her eyes for now so as long as her eyes are looking good we are good so this is nice I'm gonna right click on the layer and invert the mask so nothing is happening anymore to this layer that's why I'm gonna pick a brush a very soft brush and with a super duper zoom I am going to paint just inside of her iris like this so I'm not touching the outer ring of her eyes so I'm leaving 
this black stroke. And when I release, you're gonna see the effect right away. So now we have this beautiful color coming in. I'm actually going to pick the razor now, the razor brush, and I'm going to remove a little bit of the this area here that I went a bit too far. Perfect. Now I'm going to go to the other eye and I'm going to do the same thing. Just going to paint inside like this. Could have used a larger brush, but why? Why would I make my job easier? Right? So let go and now I know what you're saying you're saying okay this is a this is weird this is looking weird and I get it and you are right that's why we're going to apply some feather to this layer so right click on the layer feather mask and we watch the preview let's just And leave it at a, let's leave it at around 9 8.9 that's fine now we do the obvious we reduce the opacity of this effect until we are satisfied and that will be something around here if I turn it off you see the difference and that's it this is our picture want to see a before and after so here we go before this is where we started and after this is the end before and after hope you liked it don't forget to subscribe do the little bell thing tell your friends about this channel and make sure they all subscribe as well because i'll have more of these really really soon okay See you later. Ciao.